All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. We're here with David Ernst Damien, really good friend of mine, um, top producing real estate agent, investor, uh, sports car connoisseur. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you for once again being on the podcast, man. Thank you for uh, having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. So I'm actually here. This is New Year's Eve Eve. Uh, in Phoenix, here yeah. on vacation, obviously got to hang out with David if I'm here. Um, had you on the podcast a few times, talked about investing, talked about your business, but what we're doing with the podcast is really changing what we talk about. Mm -hmm. And what I want to talk about is what makes top producers tick, what really helps you consistently sell hundreds of homes every year. And um, that's what's fun for me. And, I, and I'm inspired by it. So I get inspired by you guys. I know our listeners do too. And that's just what I want to talk about. So last year, 2022, you sold 109 houses. Yeah, with my small team. Yeah, with your team. You have a few agents with you. Yeah. That's awesome, by the way. Thank 109. You. Um, and you have a higher price point too, which is yeah. fantastic. About a million last year and a million two this year. And, you, so, and, and that's what I wanted to start with sure. is in Utah, in my market, we're down 32%. Mm. Sales, like... Everyone's struggling. Yeah. That's a huge dip. And so you still did 103 transactions this year right. in a down market. Right. So what a lot of people need to hear from you and, and what I want to ask you is what are two or three things that you can say, hey, this is why in a down market, I'm still performing as good as I did in a hot market. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I would say it's just goal settings and motivation, basically, I guess is what we want to talk about. So um, I, I feel as though everybody kind of underestimates their expenses, uh, not just in the real estate business, but just in life in general. Yeah. And making in sales where you have the opportunity to make so much and coming you know, sometimes I'm driving down the street and I see people working on the side of the road and they're, you know, painting yellow lines, double yeah. yellow lines and white digging lines. ditches. Yeah. yeah. Digging ditches with a jackhammer. And I'm like, all I have to do is talk to people and I can make 10 times what they're making. Yeah. Right. While still providing a really good service for my clients. So it's not like, Oh, I'm making all this money. I'm, I'm you can take actually, care of people. Yes. And I'm actually providing jobs because I have people working for me now. Yeah. Whereas I couldn't do that in the past. So I'm helping people put food on the table, helping them buy new cars, buy houses, like it's really, it's a good feeling, man. So that's, that's why awesome. I, that's why I push really hard. I, I feel as though I, we have no excuse to not yeah. crush it in this industry. Well, there's lots of excuses though. Um, yeah. One thing you and I were talking about at dinner last night is I've had teams, multiple teams, and you've had agents in the past where they have the same opportunity. Yeah. They show up to the office though. They talk with the other agents, which yeah. you hate. Yeah, I do. <laughs> they talk, they talk, they talk. <laughs> And, and their job is to talk to clients or find new clients. Right. Yet they're messing around. They're getting a coffee with other agents in the office. Yeah. And what I attribute that to is they really haven't connected the dots of their goals to their activities. And also there's no, either no pain or pleasure connected to their goals. Right. And so let's Valid. take, Valid. yeah, let's take us back because you were raised very differently than many people mm -hmm. were because immigrant family. Sure. Yes. And it, there's just a different mentality. Mm -hmm. And so when you say, Hey, it's just goals. It's just, I have no excuses. It's like, well, yeah, that's how you were raised. Mm -hmm. Like, and you have this amazing opportunity. Everyone else has it too, though. True. So why are you doing 103 deals in a market where last year someone did a hundred, they're probably doing 75 this year. Probably. Yeah. Oh, um, even last time, sorry. So let's talk about Kevin and your mom and, and sure. your dad and your mom. Yeah. For and sure. And that upbringing and like, why is it that you don't have any excuses? Well, because the family came here with nothing. And if they made it here from a different country with nothing, how, how, do, we, how do we go home satisfied selling two, three, four, five homes a year? I mean, it just makes no sense. Like, what yeah. are you doing for all your time? So when, when we came here, it was 1992. Uh, we were basically kicked out of our country. I lived in Azerbaijan. Uh, predominantly Muslim country, yeah. we're Christians, so we were kind of kicked out of the country. We came here as refugees, basically. That's yeah. basically what ended up happening. And basically came here, we lived in a, in a basement because we had the American Red Cross helping us with uh, shelter, basically, housing and food. And uh, dad worked as a pump attendant at a gas station, full-serve gas station. Wow. Uh, mom 
was a baker in a in a basement, uh, baking cakes. It was in Boston, probably in the table in, in Boston, yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, and then once my dad was able to buy a car, he started doing pizza delivery. Um, you know, and these are jobs they were probably making four bucks an hour if I had yeah. gas back then. So for us to be able to work ten hours and make so much more than that, it just there's no excuse. I, I, I just don't know. I don't get it, man. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I don't have like a great answer because I really don't understand. I don't understand the mentality of people. It's a different way of thinking. And, you know, there's people that were poor, grew up poor. I grew up poor. Mm. I remember being on food stamps. Yeah. I remember, um, yeah, it, it's, a, you know, different people have different upbringings. And I think what I've seen that your parents really ingrained in you. We were at dinner last night. Your dad's talking about opportunity. Like, Oh my gosh, we, you know, we could do this and make so much. And he's so passionate about yeah, it yeah, yeah. because when you come from another country, like, you don't have those opportunities. They're not there. No. Literally, you can't walk around and just buy multifamily in other countries. You can't. And that's what we were talking about yeah. last night. So, you know, I did a, a Mormon mission for my church in Peru uh, years and years ago. And that's when I figured it out. Mm-hmm. That's when I was like. Oh, like these people literally are working to eat that day. Yeah. They're not saving the life. They're properties. working to survive. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's existence and survival. Yeah. And am I going to eat today? And I remember giving people money because it was winter time. He was selling his wool sweater to buy medicine because his daughter was sick. It's crazy. And he's like, I'd rather go cold, but get the medicine for my daughter. It's crazy. And I'm like, here's all my money. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. Like, that, that didn't even make sense to me. Right. Like, what? You got to go sell your sweater so you can buy medicine? So, so coming from, and, and this is the American dream, right? Like, Definitely. people come from that and they come here and they're like, I can educate my kids, I can work my ass off. And your dad's doing pretty good now, right? He's, he's not delivering right. pizzas. Yeah. yeah, he's not delivering pizzas. <laughs> he's not pumping gas. <laughs> But he did, and yeah. he loved it. He's probably grateful for that right. job at the time. So I feel like there's a very different mentality. Um, one of my best friends in high school growing up, uh, Chinese, both his parents uh, defected from, from communist China. Mm. And I mean, they freaking drilled it into him. Yeah. Like, you're gonna work, you're gonna get good grades. And there was no excuses. Mm. And right. he, he became an engineer for the Navy. His sister became, um, I think, a nurse. His brother became an engineer. They re- and their parents worked at Chinese restaurants, didn't speak English, just to put them through college. Wow. Wow. And then those three kids retired their parents. Nice. Bought them houses. That's awesome. So it's really, really cool. Yeah. But, you know, growing up, and I don't know if this is what you got from your parents, there was really freaking high expectations. Totally. Like insanely high totally. expectations. Yeah. And, you know, it's the funny story. Your parents said, you know, back in my day, your dad's like, well, fuck, back in Europe, in when we're getting kicked out of yes. Armenia yeah. or, or sorry, Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan, yes. Yes. Um, we did not have, like yeah. we were you just literally had to leave the house, leave all your belongings, take whatever you want, get lucky that you don't get murdered on the way out of the country. Uh, crazy, it's crazy, man. crazy. I actually watched a movie on that whole genocide and everything. Insane. Mm. Yeah. And not yeah, most of the world doesn't even know what happened. Right. So you guys escape that, come to America and he's like, hell yeah, I'll deliver pizzas. Yep. And, you know, that's actually one of the coolest things. I have a few friends that have had been down on their luck. And that's the difference between someone who, like, will do what it takes. Yeah. And I've had friends that feel like there's jobs below them. Oh, of course. Yeah. They don't want to work hard. But one of my good friends lost everything in 2007, left California, moved to Utah, didn't have his real estate license yet, so he delivered pizzas. Mm. I yeah. had four kids, five kids. You got to do what you got to do. Sold real estate, cold called in the morning, and then delivered pizzas for another 10 hours to, to make ends meet. Yeah. So I feel like because I know you, I feel like that's one of the biggest things attributing to your success is like, there's just not an option. Like mm-hmm. you, are, you guys are so grateful for what you have because where you came from. Sure. And that's huge. So tell me about when you got in real estate, 2016. Yep. And tell me about how many deals you did that year and the years yeah, that you got to this yeah. year. So approximately, right? Um, so I actually got my license in 2009. It was in Massachusetts. Okay. Um, but I was just kind of that real estate agent that had his license to help his family and his friends. Basically, I wasn't really doing anything. Like, yeah. I was doing near the production I'm doing right now, obviously. Um, and I also had a startup at the time and I was busy doing other stuff. I was in college at the time, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but when I moved out here, it was 2015. 
and I got my license uh, January, uh, January 2016 is when I signed up with Sotheby's. I was with Sotheby's back east as well. Okay. Um, and yeah, first year I, I did 14. Nice. Second year I did 29. Third year with the buyer's agent, we did 66. Wow. Uh, fourth year, I had a buyer's agent for half the year, so our, our production dipped um, to, I think, uh, dipped like into the 50s. Mm-hmm. And then the following year, 77, and then it, it was the, it was 2022 where we did 109, and then this year we're on track, well, we're on track with closing out the year because there's no more work. Tomorrow, days. tomorrow's the last day. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, we're at 103, basically closed year to date. Now That's my awesome. team's a little bit bigger this year than it was last year, so we have a little bit more uh, firepower to to do more. So maybe if my team stayed a little smaller, this the same size as last year, maybe we would have done in the 90s. But I still think it's it's fairly good. That's uh, awesome. We went through a lot That's of changes huge. on the team as well, uh, with like admin and and listing coordination. So um, having gone through all those ups and downs. Uh, we did fairly well this year. That's awesome, man. So 16 to 109, 103. Yeah. And 103 in the down market. That's It really is saying something. Yeah, I agree. Here's the, you know, I started my podcast in March of 2020. Okay. If you remember what's going on then. I was actually with Ed Kaminsky. Okay. At a ski resort in Utah, hanging out with him. And he's like, hey, come ski with us tomorrow. And I was like, okay, cool. Literally COVID shut down the resort. It's crazy. And he flew home. He's like, never mind. Yeah, and so at the the COVID shutdown started, and I wanted to do a podcast about multifamily, mm. and so that's what I started doing. But what I found is that I was interviewing Ed Kaminsky, Brian Burnett, yeah. Mike Darda, yeah. Michael Young, Hal Swayze, Neil Weichel, um, and we were talking about investments. But then I would get these little tidbits of, "Hey, you know, it's a tough year, and here's what I'm doing to overcome mm. the challenges of the COVID shutdown." Yeah. I'm doubling down. I'm still going to hit my goals. Yeah. And, you know, Brian Burnett, Hal, and Mike all said the same thing. They're like, I just, I guess I just have to double my efforts. That's right. Because I still have to hit my goals. Yeah, for sure. Because if, if it takes twice as much to do the same amount and you want to do the same amount, then you got you to do it. I mean, no we all know our numbers, right? So I know how many people I need to talk to to meet with a seller. And then I know how many sellers I meet with, out of how many sellers I meet with, what percentage of them I'm going to get to sign up with me. Yeah. We all know our numbers because we track it because we treat it as a business. Yeah. It's um, important to know. Yeah. What, what is your listing taken percentage? Uh, 83% right now. That's awesome. Which, it's pretty good. Do you know what industry average is? Um, I believe it's 20. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I was feeling kind of bad about, like, I was looking at my old stats. Yeah. I'm just getting back into sales. I've got sure. my company where I can kind of a little bit step away, get back into production so I can make money to invest back in my deals. And I was, I think I was at like 67 to 70 uh, the last few years I was in real estate, which is pretty good. It's pretty good. But I was like, oh, I wish I was higher, 80 something. Yeah. But then I looked at the industry. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Then I looked at industry standard. I'm like, oh, I'm okay. I'm I'm doing pretty good. You are. Those are really important numbers and numbers to know. How many people do you have to talk to, to meet with a, a seller? Uh, for me right now, I would say uh, if I had to, I haven't looked at those numbers for a while. But if I had to guess, I'd say if I I'm setting an appointment every. I should probably pull those numbers up. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to? Do it. Let's do it. So I while you're pulling that up, when I got my Mike Ferry coach, and this was really empowering. So I, lo- I love that you're pulling that up. I was at like 207 contacts. So. Call yeah, someone, oh, yeah. talk to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way high. 207 to take a listing. Yeah. But I was new, and that actually helped me a lot. Yeah. Because instead of getting frustrated, I'd be like, well, I'm at 180. I got to get a listing here in the next 30 contacts. That's I'm right. probably going to. Every no gets me closer to a yes. Yeah. And That's... so for years, I'd be like, you know, shrinking that number down, yeah. you know, maybe 150, 100 people to, to get one listing. And I was like, well, if I want to take four listings a week, I'd have talked to like 800 people. I got to shrink that number down. That's right. But still, it was so empowering knowing the numbers. So, so let's hear it. Well, and it's funny because I was going to say 40, and it's 42.45 um, contacts to, to get listing a listing taken. taken. Yep, exactly. That's awesome. So, 42 people you talk to on the phone, you go take a listing. Yep. And how many people do you talk to a day? Uh, my goal is to do 25. Awesome. Yeah. So, my goal is 25, and I probably get 
to about 20 if I had to, because now it's, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more of a manager. You're selling 100, 100 homes a year. That's hard to talk to 20 people a day. Right, exactly. So you have pendings, you have team leadership, you have trainings with your agents and so on. So it's just a little bit of a different, um, it's just a little bit of a different uh, schedule yeah, that I have now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It changes when you have to manage people. Yeah. And, um, and manage a lot of transactions. Definitely. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, weekends, you know, my, my staff may not be working as much. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm handling all that. So yeah. that's why today I was, I got in here last minute because I was on the phone. Right. Right. Dealing with the, dealing with the transaction. So that's the other thing. People don't want to work that hard. A lot of people, you know, yeah. I have agents approaching me saying, Hey, well, I, I want to do what you do, but I just don't want to work as much as you work. It's like, well, it is a direct correlation. <laughs> Yeah, something's got to yeah, get. Exactly. You work less, you make less money, you work right. more. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you and I were just talking about New Year's plans, and you're like, hey, I'm going to enjoy time with family. And then January 1st, a lot of expireds. You're yeah. going to go call them. Yeah. And that's what <laughs> the top producers do. Like yeah. they, there's a correlation between money I want to make, goals I want to hit, and the activities I do. I so, haven't uh, stayed up, I think, past midnight uh, since prior to 2015. Wow. If I had to guess. Yeah. So you're, I mean, and, and I have a boring life. Well, but we need to do a lot of fun stuff to midnight, that's right? True. We need a lot of fun yeah. stuff. I don't even like, yeah. you know, I have a dad now and, and like if, at 10 o'clock and I'm like, please, please be in bed. Like nobody <laughs> like, that's right. please don't get out of bed. I just want to fall asleep peacefully. I'm, I'm already in my second sleep cycle at there, that time. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, midnight, you know, have lots of fun to, up to midnight. You yeah. Know? So I like to say nothing good happens after nine, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maybe some good it depends on what you're nine. doing. <laughs> that's right. Um, but no, that's awesome. So, and again, back to motivation and selling a hundred homes a year, mm. immigrant family, you're disciplined with your time. You understand the numbers. Yeah. yeah. So if you're hitting 20 contacts a day, mm. you can go, you can literally say, I'm going to take a listing every other day. Basically, yeah, it's every other day. That's yeah. kind of what it is. Um, I took just over a hundred listings this year. Awesome. So it's 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 just over it's just over um, one it's just over one every other day. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's yeah. that's so cool. <laughs> and so, what is like? Let's take you back to 2016, David. Sure, sure. Um, what is like one or two things that you would tell yourself? to do then yeah. that has really helped you go from 16, 50, 60 to hundred listings that to get you there faster. Yeah. It, it's going to sound pretty cliche, but like have the blind faith that it actually works. Yeah. And I, I, I can't get my team to do it. It's crazy because I have tax returns to prove it. Right. It's yeah. Like, yeah. What, what more do you guys want? Yeah. Um, Cause I remember even in 2016, I went to the first superstar retreat uh, with Mike Ferry, who I coach with. And uh, I saw people on stage and I thought he was paying them to say what, yeah. what they were saying. And, um, and I'm like, there's no way. And I was kind of sitting in the back I, I, and every day I'd come in to the room and I try to get closer and closer to the front. And yeah. my coach at the time, Eddie Delgado, one of my favorite coaches actually is like, David, try to talk to some of the people in the front of the room and yeah. see if they can help you and, and stuff. So I started approaching people and Brady Sandal, um, Brady uh, awesome. Le, awesome. LaVert Benefield yep. from Vegas. LeVert. Awesome. They're like, yeah, we'll role play with you. I'm like, what? Why would you want to role play with me? Like, I don't yeah. know anything. And they're like, yeah. we'll do it. We'll do it with you. Hustle respects hustle. 100%. And they're like, we were there one day too. We were there in the past where you are. So um, I was just super consistent. I, I, I did not miss a single day. I probably worked. I, I even told my team, I, I go, guys, I didn't take vacations. Like, you guys are going on vacation you did, you sold 10 homes. It's great. But like, yeah, you can do so much more. You can yeah. help so many more families. That's the way I look at it. Honestly, it's, it's not even the money. It's like, if a seller goes with another agent, they're not going to get the same level of service. They're right. probably going to get less money than if they go with me. Yeah. It's sad. You yeah. And you have to believe that you have and, and, and hold your skills so that it's true. Yeah. It's, it's actually true because the average agent selling three homes, two homes a year, two to three homes a yeah. year. They cannot be as good as what at what they do as you. They have no experience. You're doing it at a high level, you're doing it a ton. Yeah, and, and experience and, and doing a lot of what you do yep. helps a ton. You, there's no way you can understand the market if you're selling three homes a year. No chance. 
no chance. And you don't know how to work the contract and you don't know how to protect people's earnest money if you're representing a buyer or secure the earnest money if you're representing a seller. There's so many things we can do. I mean, I've made my client, I've had a client that got his house back multiple times because he did a seller carry. It wasn't like I was trying to do this, but he got the yeah. house back multiple times. I sold it from three times. He sold the same house three times. He got a big down payment, got the house back, unfortunately for that person, but fortunately. Yeah, they didn't but perform, but you protected perform, him with the contract. Protected him with the contract, exactly. That's huge. Helping a lot of people actually gets you excited and... And in a way, sorry to cut you off. You're good. It's almost like there's too many agents in the industry and I don't say this like negatively, but it's almost like I'm trying to kind of weed out the industry because the more deals that we do, the less deals there are for other agents. And I'm, I'm just, I always look at the the business from the mind of the consumer, the client. Yeah. So, you know, we had our team meeting on Thursday and I actually wanted to share one thing that I did with the team here that I think would yeah. be beneficial maybe for some of the listeners. It's very motivational. It's it's um, reverse engineering your life. Um, awesome. And doing the money exercise. Yeah. So we could chat about that a little bit. But what I, what I talked about with the team was, um, so we have a team chat and in our team chat, I'll post the lead and I'll say, yeah. hey, this is one of my past clients and they want to um, buy or sell a home, okay? And they look at it and they're like, it, who, who's next to take this lead? Because there's four agents. So one of the agents was confused. He was like, well, I feel bad taking all the leads. And I said, it's not about who takes the lead. It's yeah. about servicing that client as soon as freaking possible. Yeah. Like that client sitting there saying, okay, David said he was gonna connect me with somebody. Yep. Tick tock. Yep. You know, should I just go to somebody else that like really wants yep. to earn my business? Yep. So instead of thinking about it, like what's the fair way to do this? It's like, no, who's available to service this client's needs. That's how I look. That's how I run the business. That's huge. And it's funny that you say that. Cause I just, what came to mind is you're trying to take care of a past client. Yep. That's really, really important. This Very industry. important. And time is really important as well. So that's when right. you say, Hey, someone's going to reach out to you. It better not be the next day. I know. I had a rule with my teams, five minutes. If That's you get it. a lead, you better freaking call them within five minutes. Yep. And so I, I remember this past client I gave this, this guy on my team, and they, it was the sweetest family. Mm-hmm. Hawaiian family. We had a luau at, at their house when wow. I helped them buy their house. Wow. Like they adopted, like the nicest people, friends on Facebook. Yeah. They wanted to sell and buy another house. And I'm like, perfect. I was doing 100, that was the year I did 106 deals. Gave him to this agent. He never called him. Mm. I would call him. A month later, she's like, Sam, like, we just sold a house and bought a house. And mm. I'm like, Ouch. With us? And she goes, No. Ouch. Like, your guy never called me. Yeah. She, she was offended. Oh, she's yeah. like, Why didn't he call me? Right. And well, I was already, so upset. It's already a little tough, right? Because you have a relationship with them and you're trying to kind of pass them off in yeah. a way. And they look at it that way. So they're already upset. And now you add into that the yeah. delay in time. Yeah, it's that's that's so unfortunate. The the client doesn't feel special. Yeah, they don't feel taken care of. They don't feel like you're uh, you care. Right. Um, so yeah, we had a rule that you had to call leads within five minutes. Um, when I had the team at Remax, and this was the craziest thing that it just blew my mind. So I think I had five agents on my team, and I had this friend that was making like twenty five thousand a year. Like fresh out of college, just couldn't like, geez, just like, he was really struggling. Yeah. He had a wife, they were trying to have babies. And I was like, I took him to lunch and his wife and I'm like, if you come work for me, I, you will make $100,000 your first year in real estate. I, like, I could tell he, he was hustling, he had side hustles, working nights and weekends and his wife and him laughed in my face. Mm. And they're like, oh, sorry, we thought you were joking. Mm. Like, no, I'm not BSing no, you guys. No, like, so come work with me and you'll make a hundred thousand. So for the next year, he would, I said, just work with me three hours a day. I only need three hours of work a day. Yeah. And his name's Josh. And he's like, what? I'm like, I only want you to work three hours a day. Come call with me three hours a day. Yeah. And I don't care what the hell you do with your time. Sure. Like literally I just need three hours a day. <laughs> and he did it. And he made $180,000 his first year in real estate. I believe it. Everyone else on the team made less than 100000 I believe it. It's it, it, the, the agents in sales, you have control over how much you make or don't make. Yeah. My, uh, my buyer's agent in 2020, she cracked 
she was her. She did one deal prior to uh, joining the team, and it was yeah. representing her brother on one of my listings. Her wow. brother bought one of my listings, and so um, we we I was talking with my with my admin and my TC, and I'm like, this girl is good because yeah. she's all over it. Nice. And we didn't look up her production. We had no idea this was her only deal. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I gotta get her to join. Yeah. So I call her and I'm like, Colleen. I'd like you to join the team. You crushed it on this transaction, and I think you could do really well with us. And she's like, "Well, what do you think I can make?" I'm like, "You'll make six figures year one." She's like, "No way." Yeah. And I'm like, seriously? Like, just, just, just meet with me. Yeah. She met with me, and I think she did on like 130. That's awesome. 530, something like that. That's awesome. First year in real estate, like it's possible. brand new. It's just, it's, yeah. It, if you want it, you can have it. That's, yeah. That's kind of how it is. So you talked about Mike Ferry, uh, superstar retreats. Yeah. I started going in 2012. Yeah. In 2013, you know how you, get, you have the Mike Frey notebook? Yes. You show up. So every event, and I would go to an event every couple of months. I was just trying to fill my brain with positive. Because I, I had a lot of negative, like I could never do that. I could never sure. do that much more thoughts. So my, I think it was my Mike Frey coach shouting me. He's like, write it down every day. So every day I wrote down, make a million dollars a year by 2018. Love that. And I started doing that in 2013. And like... Literally, like when you looked at the numbers and reverse engineered how many homes I had to sell, and I was like, "How the hell could I ever do that?" Mm. It did not make sense to me. Of course, yeah. but I wrote it down. Like, yeah. I'm going to make a million dollars by 2018, and I started making more money, more money, more money, and I made 1.2 in 2018. Yep, nice. And like, I didn't even <laughs> get it. I was just like, "How?" Like, but it's just a progression. You talked about blind faith, just doing the activities. You know, it's worry about doing the activities. Blind faith. You asked a few things, blind faith, discipline, consistency, and the accumulation effect, yeah. which is huge, right? Sometimes it doesn't come in the first six months, but yeah. you just got to keep doing it. So what happens with agents is they put in a few weeks, they're like, ah, no results, yeah. I'm done. Or like, let or me just call not five do people this. a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, <laughs> let me just not do this. Let me take a week off. Let me take a month off. When you have momentum, don't take your foot off the gas pedal. Right. Push harder on the gas pedal because yep. you want that snowball to just grow bigger and Keep bigger, and bigger. Exactly, because it's your pipeline, you know? So that's why I tell my agents, they're like, oh, we got two pendings, we're good. Not really, because yeah, in yeah. 30 days, those pendings close, and by the way, one of them falls out of escrow, and now you only got one that closed, and yeah. you have nothing built up in your pipeline, you're gonna have a deal in like 90 days. There's a 90 yeah. day rule in our business. Yep, it's huge. Well, talk to us about reverse engineering, because you and yes. I do it literally probably every month, yes. every year. I know exactly how many people I need to talk to, because here's how much money I want to make. Yeah, it takes me X amount of you know contacts. So I've already done that for 2024. Yeah. Oh, um, good. Good for getting you. Getting back into production. Yeah, nice. I, I usually spend the weeks, my free time during December, thinking about 2024. Good. You know, with Mike Ferry coaches, we usually do it in October, November. That's right. Um, That's when your year starts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got <laughs> to start way ahead of time. Yeah, if you start sure. in January, you and I were talking last last night. You've already lost January. You have to start November, December. So I've I already pre-planned my year, but as even down to like what vacations am I going to take? Yeah, your even down to like with my kids' sports. I love coaching my kids' sports. Yeah. Like I know. I, so actually, here, okay, here's something really cool I just did. Um, I have my kids fifty percent of the time. They're with their mom Mondays, Tuesdays, and every week I get them on Wednesday after school. Okay, and. I'm usually working. I pick them up from school. I always pick them up, but then I'm like, Hey, I got to work for a few more hours and there's so much energy and they just want me and they're bugging me. I work from home. Yeah. And so what I actually did in my schedule for 2024 is I said, I will not work a single Wednesday in 2024. Love that. My whole team, my company that I'm running, everyone knows kids get out at 2 15 on Wednesday. Don't bug Sam is unreachable. <laughs> yeah, don't and, bug. I'm tell and all my listing appointments, all my showings, like, mm -hmm. Sorry guys, I will never show a house or list a house Wednesdays okay. because that's when my kids, I haven't seen them in two, three, four days, depending yeah. on the schedule. And I'm going to spend the next four or five hours with them, giving them Priorities. attention, love, yeah, hanging out with them. It, I do take them on appointments sometimes. Yeah. So if they're able to come on appointment <laughs> with me, I'll do that. That's but I, yeah, I just did that for 2024. 
I'm not working anyone. That's so cool. After, after that's 2 so p.m. cool. Well, that's your, one of your standards. Yeah, and we all have to have standards in our business. And Absolutely. I think that's like what one of the age, one of the things that agents are really missing out on is not having standards in their business. And I don't think you need to have a ton of standards when you're just brand new to business. But once yeah. your business starts rolling and you really start producing, of course, you got to set boundaries and you have to have standards. And yeah, we have priorities in our life. Your kids are only going to be kids for so long, yeah. right? Then they're going to grow up and you want to spend those times and, and, and moments with them that, that you cherish. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll, I'll work early, you know, when they're at school, exactly. Saturdays when they're with their friends in the mornings, I'll be working. So yeah. anyways, tell me about your, oh, your okay. goal setting and, yeah, and for sure. what you've engineered for 2020. So what I, so what I did was I, I did this uh, exercise with, with my team on Thursday, the ones that came into the office, because a few of them are off already, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I told them to reverse engineer their life for 2024. This is the money exercise. So what do you want different in the next year? Okay, and this is motivation. This is goal setting and motivation. So do you want a new a house, or do you want a new car, or do you want to do some vacations, or maybe you want to increase your investment properties, maybe you want to get involved in charities, experiences, maybe you want to go to events, entertainment events, sports games, right? Concerts. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I told them to write down, number one, let's say you want to upgrade your living situation, your rent rental that you're in or the house that you're in. How much more is it a month? So let's say the increase is $3,000 a month just out of, um, maybe right now you're paying $1,500 and you want to really upgrade it to $4,500 a month. So yeah. it increases $3,000. Uh, maybe you want to upgrade your car and your new car payment is going to be $1,500 a month yep. instead of $500 a month. Uh, maybe you want to go out to eat more often. Okay, so dinner. A $200 dinner two times a week is $800 a month extra. Mm-hmm. Um, 200, yeah, $200 dinner, let's say you're doing it once a week, is $800, $800 a month extra. Okay. Maybe you want to work in a massage once a week. So $150 massage, that's $600 a month. Maybe you want to get your house professionally cleaned twice a week. Yes. Okay. 250 bucks each, that's $2,000 a month, right? Uh, maybe you want to spend $1,000 a month on new clothing. Maybe you want to go to a concert and not worry about your budget. So maybe you want to budget $1,000 a month for that. Maybe you're not going to go to a concert every month, but you're going to go to, to three concerts a year, and that's you know approximately going to be $1,000 a month. Maybe you want to save $5,000 a month to put towards investment properties, okay? Um, What about some miscellaneous purchases or collectibles or watches or whatever, or rings or jewelry, $2,000 a month. And charities, $500 a month or $1,000 a month. Choose a few families and help them have a great Christmas next year. I love that. How cool we do that that every year. Right, that's so awesome. Or like give out turkeys on Thanksgiving. Just do something really cool. So the, and I don't have a number added up here because I just gave you random numbers, but let's say the number is, I don't know, $20,000 a month. Yeah. Well, in real estate, you can sell two, three homes, seven to $10,000 in commission on each one, and you yep. can basically make that. So the, the mindset is, oh my gosh, what do I have to do to help three more people buy or sell a home? Right. In January and February and, March, and every month this year. Yes. Yeah. Coming up here. If huge. I do that, I can achieve the life. Because we were talking about um, survival and then experiences and yeah. having a, a life that you're, that you're enjoying. Surviving versus thriving. Exactly. And I think that is the word I, I was looking for. Let me see if I have um, something different here. Um, I wrote desire. So survival and desire. But I like yeah. surviving and thriving. It yeah. actually rhymes. So I prefer that one. <laughs> it's a good one. And, you know, so you're helping people. Right. And, and you're providing a better life for yourself and your family. Your kids, your family deserve it. Your parents deserve right. it. You know, um, what are you doing for your parents? Like your parents helped you get to where you're at. Yeah. Right. My parents raised me, put me through, through school, high school, helped me with college. I paid for a lot of myself, but they helped me a lot with yeah. college too. So how am I going to give back to them? So my goal is to have my dad set, my parents set up with passive income that's so awesome. that they can live off that in the event that he can't work anymore. That's awesome. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. I mean, that's it's huge. like, we got to think bigger. What, what do, and we have these opportunities. We just don't take advantage. Of well, and, and connecting the dots too. And, and, you know, and, and maybe, you know, I'm going to throw this out there. Some people work good with pain instead of goals. Yeah. What happens if you don't freaking do what you're supposed to mm. I would always have that on my wall. What happens if I don't hit my goals? Can't put my kids in private school. Yep. Uh, my daughter needs a tons of medication. I'm not going to be able to pay for the best doctors. Right. She has really bad asthma. 
Um, that's scary. Not going to be able to save for college. Yeah. I want to put my kids through college. Not going to be able to invest in investment properties. Mm. And so I would also do that. So I'd have my dream board was there. I also have my, like my nightmare, nightmare wow. board. That's really what the freak happens if you don't do this, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd be like, well, stress, anxiety. Yeah. Won't we'll have enough money. Won't we'll have the car, the house I want, the life I want for my family. And because that stuff's motivating, but you also got to look at what happens if I don't do all mm. that stuff. Very Am I being the person that I want to be? And which one do I want to be? Mm. And then you connect it to, I got to talk to 42 people to get a listing. That's right. And you just know exactly what you have to do. And it used to be, like you said, 200 people, but that's okay. It's not yeah. that hard to talk to 200 people. It really it's not. isn't. No, I was talking yeah, to 40 people tools. a day. Yeah. 40 people a day. You oh, used get to do that pretty more. quick. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, it's funny. So Shiv uh, Banzal. Oh, I love Shiv. We met in 2013. He was so rude to me, but it was funny in a good way. Yeah. I, I talked to him at the retreat. And I'm like, what's your secret? He's like, well, I prospect six hours a day. And then I take like six months off to Love go to, back to India or three months off to go visit family. He's like, how much do you prospect a day? I'm like, uh, like 30 contacts, three hours. It's like, what the hell do you do with your time, what Sam? Do you do? That's right. He's like, you don't have deals. So you're not doing deals. Yeah. So why aren't you prospecting? Right. And I was like, good well, point. I'll tell you, I mean, and, and there is some validity to it. It's that you're scared of rejection sometimes. That's why we don't prospect. Yeah. We're scared yeah. of what, not knowing what to say. It's boring. It's, it's boring. boring. That's another thing. Yeah. Get rejected. I'd rather do something else. I'd rather yeah. go out for a coffee or go, go to yeah. Starbucks. We're independent contractors. We don't have to do it. Yep. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no. And, and so yeah, connect the dots. I bought my mom a car this, a year ago. Well, that was fun. fun. Respect. That's cool. Her nice. car was 1999 Tahoe, falling apart, yeah. sold it for like a couple grand, yeah. got her a nice little Subaru, really great grandma nice. car. Nice. Um, there's things that are really fun that you can do. I took my daughter uh, in August, a daddy daughter day, she turned 10, mm. took her to Ed Sheeran front row. Dude, she lost her cool. mind. That's like this so little 10 year old. She'll never forget that. Oh dude, we flew to Denver, like didn't have to worry about money, stayed yeah. in a hotel together, went yeah. to Ed Sheeran. Um, next day got Manny Petty's like, that's the type of shit I want to do as a dad. Like, yeah, she's never going to forget that. And never every year that. until she moves out or moves away, we're going to do daddy daughter trips for her birthday. It's not a birthday party. It's mm. a freaking three day trip Let's to, go. to somewhere. So yeah. there's really fun things. And, and we help a family every Christmas and every Thanksgiving and, and we have charity and stuff. So, you know, I, I'm trying to remember who said this, but they said, if you have the capacity you have the responsibility to make a lot of money. Yeah. Because you poor people have less options for helping. You can still serve if you're not making good money. There's right. nothing wrong with not making a ton of money. But the doors of opportunity open up so much wider when you have money, you're good at what you do, yeah. you're inspiring as well, you're providing jobs for other people. And so I really do feel like you have the responsibility and I feel like that what that's what your parents helped ingrain in you. And your whole life experience of you have to do this. You don't have excuses. I really don't. And I have nothing else to do. Like, it's so easy. Why don't we do it more often? Yeah. It's, I don't know. I hope you can feel the passion because like yeah. when I'm with the team, I get really passionate. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like you have- They're on social media. They're right. You know, it's like, I, I've gone through what they've gone through and I want to help them. And it's not even, like I told you yesterday, you know, we're probably going to do about 120 next year. That's, that's, that's our goal. Yeah. My goal is not to do a hundred of them. I yeah. want them to do 40. Yeah. You know, and I'll do 80. Yeah. I know they're still not going to work as hard as me. Yeah. But we, but we have all the tools. I, 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 I can train people. Like, Absolutely. It's just crazy. It's like, but then, you know, um, I think it was a, um, or a Nightingale quote. You can't, you can't help the downtrodden. You can't uplift the downtrodden. That's right. That's the quote. Mike Ferry quotes that from Earl. Yeah. yeah. And it's so true. Yeah. It's like, if they don't want to help, if they don't want help, if they don't want to do it, why are we pushing them? Yeah. Like I'm trying to make them me. They don't want to be me. Yeah. They, and, and they don't want to, or they say they do. But they say they want to, right? So then I try so hard but they meet with us and they say, yeah. hey, I really want to do it. And it's like, okay, well, here's what you really got to do to really do it. And, and you know what? Sometimes people surprise you and sometimes true. they'll figure it out. True. Um, but I've spent, and, and I don't know if I'll ever have a team again because I've spent so much time. I love helping people. Mm. I get so passionate and excited about it. I actually coached for a multifamily 
Um, he has a huge company. This guy does multifamily. And I didn't take a paycheck because I just liked coaching. I loved yeah. helping people figure it out. And I loved coaching. And as a team leader, I would get so mad. Like, guys, like, I would call their old leads and I'd sell houses to yeah, their old leads. for sure. They weren't calling. Of course. And I get so mad because they don't have money. They're like, oh, yeah, we can't go to the retreat. We don't have money or we can't go on vacation. So or, crazy. Or, you know, I just get so mad because they just, they didn't want it. Yeah. But it's okay. Not everyone's the same. Not everyone wants it. Not everyone wants to go through the monotony of calling 40, 50 people a day. Not everyone wants to improve their skills. Not everyone wants to set goals. Yeah. I mean, you talk true. to some people about goals and they're just like, oh, right. I don't, and I don't like that. So I'm at an office right now where our, our team leader, the office manager is an ex Tony Robbins coach uh -huh. and speaker. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, Sam, you probably don't like this stuff. You're too cool. I'm like, I fucking love it. Yeah, for sure. I would just want to hear you talk to make me feel happier and more motivated yeah. every single day. <laughs> yeah. Like I just want to hear that stuff in my brain all the time. That's, That's why I'm not carrying. It really is. Yeah. You're either going to listen to the news and listen to other people's sob stories. Right. Or are you going to listen to motivation? I prefer to listen to motivation. Yeah. That's yeah. why I do the podcast because yeah. I love hearing this stuff. No, so um, what do you think is one thing that David Ustamian could do in 2024 mm -hmm. to get a few more deals? To, to get to 130? Yeah. So that, that's a good question. I've talked to my coach about this. So for us, it's going to be focusing on, focusing part of our efforts on connecting with people or organizations that can give us multiple deals maybe. Yeah. So focusing on attorneys, yeah. focusing on accountants, um, building relationships with builders. And if we could do this, because you know, if I tried doing this in 2016, they would say, well, who are you? You have no experience. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know what you're doing. But now I can say, hey, look, well, I, I sold a hundred homes last year, so I could, Probably help you in a way. Yeah, I mean, every it's a it's this isn't this isn't David the real estate guy. This is a this is the David the real team. estate operation. Yeah, I mean this is I we're, we're a smooth oiled machine. Like everything, there's a process and system for everything in place. So a builder love love I, I builders that work with me. They love working with me. That's awesome because they know that they can always get a hold of us. My yeah. team or I are always available for them. We should when I call you, there's always someone answering the phone. Yeah, usually not you, <laughs> but they're like, "Hey, David, call you right back." He's on yeah. the phone. But you know the beautiful thing is when when Sandy answers, she's in the office. I see her. Yeah. Right. So if she's on the phone and say, "Oh, Sam," uh, okay. And then she comes in, or she just texts me, Sam, Sam's calling. Okay, no problem. I'll give him a call right back. And then yeah, yeah. typically call you within minutes. If I'm in the office, not right. on an appointment, I'll try to call you later. But it, it's it's just a different level of service and yeah. a different experience for the client. And experiences are things that they never forget. So when I, I talk to my team and I'm like, hey guys, we try so hard to get this client. Let's not mm -hmm. lose them. Yeah, yeah, take care of them. Yeah, let's make them feel really good so that they can come back and they can refer people. So January 13th, we're doing a client appreciation event. Yeah. We're doing it at the Phoenix Zoo for Zoo Lights. Yeah. We're going to have admission to the zoo, catered food and drink. I got 250 people RSVP. Damn, that's awesome. <laughs> that's a lot. That's people that appreciate how you made them feel and they're coming in. That's right. The yep. way we give back to spend, them and so we're spending time. time. Yeah. That's and awesome. Last year we did it here. We had a ton of people show up. Um, it was like I had ballet up front. I mean, we go all out for our clients. That's you know? cool. That's the difference. Yeah. Like, well, what's the difference between you and everybody else? That is. It's the whole experience. The level of service. Yeah. I, I call it the Nordstrom experience. Yeah. You know, if you shop at Walmart or, or it's Carlton. you know, yeah, Old Navy for school yeah. uh, clothes, then you go to Nordstrom yeah. and they're like, how can I help you? Yes. You know, how, well, let me be of service to you. Like, right. Literally just waiting on you. Yeah, the return policy is anytime you want. Yeah. <laughs> return yeah. it anytime you want. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so that's awesome. Well, I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you. David, um, I hope you find that source of deals that get you multiple listings this next year. Thank you. So you can surpass your goals. Um, I know you're going to do it. <laughs> and I really appreciate what you're that you represent, which is a huge amount of hard work, motivation, improving your skills, and being disciplined. Mm -hmm. You're 35, 34? 34, 34, yeah. 34, next couple of years, you can honestly, with how much you've invested back into uh, real estate, real estate yeah. you'll be able to walk away from the business yeah. before you're 40, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And that's something we didn't even get into today. That was on the last podcast. That's huge. Thank so you. congratulations, thank you. thank you, and for our listeners, Send referrals to David yeah. if you're in other par parts of the country. Phoenix, Scottsdale, yeah. 
Um, this I whole tell area. people any part of Arizona they can reach out to me because if I can't service it, which a lot of the state I obviously can't service, yeah. I can connect them with people that can. Absolutely. So, yeah. Awesome, man. Thanks Thank a lot. You. You're awesome. Appreciate you.